Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Joshi, for making time today um, to come and talk to us. Yeah, it's really, really important that uh, you know, the work that you are doing is helping a lot of other people. So uh, we would like to help uh, you know, more people understand that you know, uh, they can create their own turning points right here, right now, if they really want to and if they, if they actually do it. So uh, I would like to start by uh, you know, asking Mr. Santos Joshi about, uh, ask you to introduce yourself. Yes, uh, can you introduce yourself to us, uh, what you're doing right now, and then also maybe brief us about, uh, you know, your, your childhood years, your early years growing up. Uh, by, by the way, what year were you born, by the way? I was born in 1968. Oh, okay, okay, right. I, I was born in 1971. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Yeah, we're same generation. <laughs> same generation, correct. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll just give you a brief about, uh, about my journey. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by education, but uh, the journey didn't start there. It started much earlier. Uh, when I was studying, uh, my father was a government servant. And uh, uh, we were, uh, I, I come from a small uh, town in India called Gwalior, where I was born and brought up. Early days uh, were... Uh, uh, a bit of a struggle, basically, because uh, I was, uh, you know, uh, into so many different uh, stuff. Uh, academically, I was uh, an average student, but uh, I was a good sportsman. I was, you know, into, into a lot of other activities. I was a good singer and uh, stuff like that. Right. Uh, always interested in adventures. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to go out and uh, uh, travel and do the adventure. But somehow the other uh, things, uh, the family conditions uh, and other things prevented me from, uh, you know, doing all that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there is a, uh, there is a uh, societal conditioning which, uh, which is there uh, in India, I'm sure elsewhere as well, uh, that uh, one needs to, you know, study uh, either as an engineer or a doctor or uh, some professional study to, to be successful in life. So, uh, you know, when, when in school, uh, when I had to take subjects, I said I want to take arts because I was good in arts and paintings and stuff like that. My father said, no, you must, you must take mathematics because that's how you will become an engineer. Because he wanted me to, to be an engineer. And, you know, that's how societal conditioning uh, is uh, in India. That, you know, unless you become an engineer, doctor or some, something of that sort uh, in, in professional studies, you can't be, be successful. So, because everything is job oriented. Yes. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I uh, took mathematics. All my friends took mathematics as well. Uh, when we come to the stage where, you know, we, we uh, have to get admission in uh, a professional college, there's an entrance exam. So all my friends appeared for this pre-engineering uh, test. Uh, I also appeared that uh, test and uh, and I was, I was not uh, very sure what I'm going to do because I, academically I was not, not good at all. But uh, surprisingly, uh, I got selected in the engineering college. <laughs> and that was a big, you know, kind of turning point because uh, I never expected me to, <laughs> to be in that college, to be very frank. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, once, once you get into, into an engineering college, you have to get out as an engineer. So I came as, out as an engineer, as a mechanical engineer. And then how uh, society takes, takes uh, you know, the patterns uh, takes you ahead. Uh, once you get a job, once you are, uh, you know, educated, then you get a job, then you have a family, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So yes. that pattern uh, caught up with me. So, you know, I, from, from Gwalior, that little town where I was born, I then came to Mumbai uh, to get a job. I, I started a job in, an, in a uh, steel uh, company. And then, you know, the life took its own uh, turns. I got married in uh, 1996. And uh, so that's, that's how it happened. And I kept on working uh, for 17 years, hmm. uh, uh, always thinking that I wanted to do something else in my life. But I could never do that during my you know, job days because it's, that's how life uh, takes you ahead. So in 2007, when I realized and there was a strong uh, feeling that, you know, no, I, I should, I'm here to do something else and I'm not here to 
you know, do this corporate uh, uh, kind of job or live a corporate life. That is when I, you know, took a decision. But of course, the journey has started much earlier. So when I got married, uh, you know, I always had this question in my mind that what happens after death? And I was very intrigued about this uh, question, what happens after death? My wife, uh, when she came in my life in, uh, in, in 1996, and we started discussing, and she uh, fortunately was also uh, had similar questions. So I got a you know, partner who, with whom I could discuss these things. So then we started discussing and you know, talk, spoke to many people, people who have had the near-death experiences, people who have had you know, these uh, uh, occult experiences, this, uh, you know, uh, all these things, and uh, read many books during that time. And we came to know more, more and more things about what really happens after death. That actually took us towards uh, what I am doing now. So I went, uh, underwent uh, this process called past life regression, which is uh, a process which takes you, you know, into the memories which have been, which are stored in your subconscious or, uh, you know, memories of all your past lives. And I got wonderful experiences during that time. I got beautiful, you know, experiences about myself, about my own life and stuff like that. Right. Uh, somewhere in 2003, uh, it was a coincidence, but now I know it was not a coincidence. Uh, one of my friends took me to a place, uh, an hour drive from uh, Mumbai. This yeah. place is called as Ganesh Puri, ah. where uh, uh, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's a burial place of an Indian guru. Oh. So this guru's name is Nityanand, Swami Nityanand. Oh. And, uh, you know, in India, we call this as Samadhi. Samadhi is the place where mortal remains of a guru is buried. Oh. So uh, this, this uh, guru, he had taken Samadhi in 1962. So I had never met him in my life, uh, in this mm. lifetime. Yeah. But when I went there, uh, something happened. You know, there were, the energies were so strong. And uh, when, once I went there, it was like, a life changing experience for me uh, in the mm. sense that it, it is as if I have come home and I got connected to that energy. And uh, I said, you know, suddenly felt that there's some energy uh, which is always there guiding me and protecting me uh, in this field. And uh, that's how it started. So my spiritual journey uh, started from there. And uh, I got many, many experiences, uh, spiritual experiences after that. Uh, came to know about my own uh, past life and my purpose of life uh, in that phase. And uh, then, uh, of course, you know, this whole uh, calling, uh, inner calling uh, became stronger and stronger that uh, I'm, I'm here to do something else and not, you know, for this uh, corporate kind of job, which I'm, I'm doing right now. So uh, it took me to a point in 2007 when, uh, when I was still working as a country head in a multinational company. Uh, I came to a point where I felt that, no, this is not what I'm here to do. But uh, of course, there were challenges. And, uh, you know, suddenly if you leave a job, uh, which is a high paying job, uh, like what I was doing, uh, you suddenly get this financial constraint. And, you know, you can't really take a take a step uh, suddenly in your life because, you know, you have to pay your bills uh, at home. Yes. yes. But my wife was very supportive of me. Uh, she's, a, uh, she's an architect. And she said that uh, since we are both on this path uh, and we both want to do what we you know, are really passionate about in our life, why don't you go ahead and do something, start something on, uh, uh, in your life? I will support the family. Uh, and once we are stable, uh, you know, we, I will come to the same path as well. But you know, let's get, 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 give it a, ourselves a chance one by one. And that was like a rock solid support for me. So then I took it, uh, took this uh, uh, step of leaving the job and uh, became a, a life coach. I became a past life regression therapist. So, you know, I started taking people into their past lives and getting, helping people uh, getting their own answers about their, you know, what is their purpose of life and, uh, you know, deeper level answers. Uh, somewhere in 2009, I was experimenting a lot with uh, my own meditations and my, with my breath. Uh, breathing process and uh, that is when I uh, came across one small uh, little technique uh, where I was always uh, you know trying to uh, understand or to find you know we all we are all in corporate world corporate jobs and we don't have time to 
really heal ourselves to keep ourselves mentally emotionally and physically fit uh, it is said that if you meditate for an hour or hour and a half or two hours every day uh, you will be you know uh, completely healed and every day you must uh, do uh, do this kind of meditation but who has time you know we don't have time because we are always we are always running so i was always trying to find something which is small uh, but which can give you that uh, benefit of an hours meditation yes. so uh, this technique came about in 2009 where uh, it was a you know kind of uh, a combination of seven breathing patterns and uh, i call this technique as sky so the sky as a technique sky healing uh, came uh, in 2009 and i started teaching it to various people and that became a kind of a phenomenal success because people started coming to me uh, that after practicing sky we have found lot of physical benefits people who are you know could come out of their diabetes medicines people could come out of their blood pressure medicines this that and you know many many emotional uh, issues uh, out of depression out of uh you know fears so this sort of became kind of a, a big success that time and then slowly slowly i started teaching sky to many various people so now uh, at this point of time i am a past life regression therapist uh, i take people into their past lives at the same time i'm i make therapists so you know i i make i train people uh, to become a therapist past life regression therapist and i am uh, teaching sky as a technique so as a founder of sky i teach sky uh, there are two uh, techniques and there are three levels of sky so i teach this technique uh, all across uh, the country in various cities we have these workshops uh, of past life regression and sky and uh, so so that's how my journey has been so it's been a very kind of an intriguing journey in the sense that uh, a uh, lot of ups and downs uh, i finally came to the path where i am now feeling very very satisfied very uh, you know calm and peaceful from within and i am feeling uh, kind of you know full, filled with gratitude uh, that uh, i am on this path where i am i am able to uh, help many many people uh, in their lives right right what year was it when you uh, started doing what you are doing right now uh when i so uh, there there's a uh, it's it's a it's a phase uh, in the sense that there was no yes. year uh, particular uh, yes. year but uh, in 2007 i left my job and uh, officially started on this path right. but the process probably had started much before that yes yes because you uh, went to ganesh puri in 2003 correct so your friend brought you there uh, did he say anything or he felt an urge to bring you there or how how did it all happen you know well uh, uh, you know it's so happened uh, now i know that there is nothing uh, no coincidence in our lives everything is planned uh, you know uh, at at a deeper level so you know things things are going as per a larger plan in our all, all our lives hmm. but that time we we had just changed our house we i bought a new house and we came to this house and these these friends were our neighbors so we uh, when we went to their house they were you know in uh, inclined towards this subject so we were having a lot of spiritual discussions uh, with mm. each other and during one such discussion uh, this friend said that look there is a place which is very very powerful and you must go there i will take you there mm. so i said fine of course we must go there and that's how you know uh, i went there right right so can i know like your friend right he is definitely very connected to the spiritual path so how how is his life like you know how how is he uh... he's uh, still connected he's uh, still very much into spirituality a very very pious uh, human being uh, mm -hmm. a very very spiritual human being and uh, yeah i mean he uh, i i have so many you know so much of gratitude uh, for him because uh, uh, because of him i could you know uh, actually come to on, come on this path right So after 2003 the visit to Ganesh Puri uh what what are some of the action that you took like because you went further like you advance your knowledge in in this area right so you went to seminars or did you look for other gurus or read up some books you know so i uh, one uh, i had experiences you know so in india we say that we have these spiritual experiences so uh, uh, we always uh, used to believe that we all need a living guru 
so i i said you know uh, living guru of course uh, yeah uh, if you need one how do i find a living guru because uh, i had never met uh, swami nityanand in my life he had already you know taken uh, a samadhi and uh, how to find one because there are so many and how to choose because uh, uh, in this in today's world uh, you don't know who is uh, real and who is fake yes so i uh, you know went to uh, one of these days uh, in 2003 i went to uh, ganesh puri and uh, uh, i was sitting there and meditating and i asked this question i said i need i need a living guru and i you know i, I don't know how to progress on this uh, spiritual path so that is when uh, when i was coming back uh, suddenly there was one person you know who was surrounded by a few people and he was uh, he looked like very very calm person and uh, i i said let me stop and you know go to him and talk to him and i mm-hmm. i went there yeah. and uh, he suddenly said i know why you have come here so i was you know i was little surprised i said uh, what is this i mean i i didn't expect him to say this and he said that look i am i am holding a, a kind of a uh, in india we call it shivir uh, you know where people congregate and do meditation together yes so he said i am holding a, a shivir uh, at, a, at in mumbai and why don't you join me there uh, that is where we are going to do the initiation uh, in spirituality so and, and that is what i was looking for you know i said i i need a living guru for my initiation so uh, i was actually very very surprised i touched his feet there and uh, he gave me a number to contact and stuff like that so i uh, when i came back uh, i tried to register there but somehow it didn't happen and uh, you know i i just forgot that it was few months down the line right uh, so i had forgotten and then once again uh, uh, you know again a coincidence i was coming from delhi uh, to mumbai uh, and uh, uh, at the airport i again saw this person <laughs> and he instantly recognized me he said oh uh, how are you i said i'm fine it's so nice to see you again and he said did you register for that seminar which i had asked you for and he remembered that oh my so, god so i said no i i, I completely <laughs> forgot about it yeah so he said no no you must i mean i'm i'm coming there and it was few days later so i immediately you know he said look this is another number you can call on this number so i immediately registered for that i went there and i guess that is where uh, you know the initiation happened but uh, experiences if you ask me there were many many experiences uh, things like you know things used to whatever i think uh, used to happen immediately whatever i i used to ask for i used to you know uh, kind of manifest it in my life yes. so on and so forth so it was like a beautiful uh, kind of journey at that point of time where things were like materializing and more i meditated more i could feel that i can actually you know uh, made a lot of make a lot of difference in my own life and uh, so so it was like a beautiful journey many many experiences during that time wonderful wonderful right so can you uh, dwell a little bit about the 12 minute you know how do you come about like fine tuning like putting everything like you know the seven breathing patterns you know because uh, i would like to know uh before you come up with this system of your own what were your daily practice like so i uh, started this journey with uh, meditation so every day meditation was like it became a a, a habit but uh, many times uh, it used to happen that i used to wake up at 2 o'clock in the night mm-hmm. and uh, suddenly there was an urge of you know going in in my meditation room and sitting there and connecting myself to the Uh, to my you know inner self and uh, uh, it started happening uh, pretty uh, regularly in the sense that you know without rhyme or reason i used to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. and uh, i used to sit for a couple of hours uh, meditating so during that time i was also uh, experimenting a lot with my breathing with my breathing patterns and yeah. how breath takes you deeper uh, into your you know own uh, own self and breath actually is a very very powerful medium uh, to take you into a, a deep level of trance so uh, uh, there were various patterns i used to do uh, you know i started uh, with indian you know system which is called as pranayama uh, which basically means uh, con- control of your breath and so on and so forth but there were few t- patterns which uh, i you know discovered myself 
uh, when I was doing those patterns, that used to take me to a very, very deep level of meditation. Wow. Uh, and uh, those were, you know, four or five patterns which I used to do, and they were actually taking me to a deep level of trance. And then I said, let me, you know, devise something, uh, making uh, these patterns into a combination. And mm -hmm. I made a combination of these seven techniques. And uh, that's how then, you know, it, it became a very short technique. It became like a, a eight or nine minute technique, uh, which, uh, which used to take me deep. And I used to feel very, very refreshed after doing that. Uh, and I, I, then I taught it to a few people, to uh, people around me. And uh, they also started telling that, you know, this is, this is uh, really working wonders in our lives. So that gave me confidence. And then I said, okay, let me, you know, start, let me formalize this. Uh, Sky as a name uh, also came in during meditation. So it came as an insight during meditation that, that, that I should name uh, this technique as Sky. There's no, there's no full form uh, of Sky, but it's, you know, the Sky is a technique. Uh, so I named this as Sky and uh, then of course, you know, the rest is a history. So it became very, very popular here. Right, right. And then you are now uh, teaching this to a lot of co corporate clients, uh, people from all walks of life around the country. Is that right? Correct, correct. I have also uh, had a few workshops outside uh, India as well mm -hmm. and uh, right. in India as well. So, all, you know, all, many, many corporate clients, many individuals. There are people, uh, I've, I've made sky teachers now. So these sky yes. teachers, what they do is in various cities, they uh, teach this sky technique to, to people in their, those cities. Right, right. I see. Wonderful, wonderful. Can you tell me some of the uh, health benefits that come with the sky techniques, the 12 minute sky technique? Oh, there are many. Uh, we have found that, uh, you know, whatever we go through in our life, uh, it's all emotional. It's all the root is emotions. So whatever physical issues we go through is also uh, rooted in our emotions. So suppose we we go through an issue or a problem in our life, uh, we there's a there's an automatic response within ourselves, uh, which we uh, you know which is which is coming from very very old uh, times when we actually you know where we were uh, animals or we were Neanderthals. Uh, the response of fight or flight. Mm, and yes. uh, this response uh, earlier, of course, used to come uh, when we were, you know, uh, attacked by predators. But today's times, there are no predators uh, moving around. But still, a small uh, thing such as uh, uh, you are stuck in a in a uh, traffic, you know, uh, uh, stuck in a traffic, or you uh, are late for your uh, scheduled meeting, or uh, there's a you know some fight with your boss or something like that a small issue can suddenly trigger this response of fight or flight. And then suddenly, you know, a lot of things happen in your body, uh, your endocrine system, uh, especially this three glands, hypothalamus, pituitary and adrenal glands, suddenly activating and giving you this whole uh, response of fight or flight within your body. So uh, what Sky does is that it stops uh, you from creating that fight or flight response. It uh, it takes you to a level, to uh, a state where this response is not initiated by small, small things, uh, which we call as stress. And uh, when the stresses are not created at all, uh, you, uh, you know, the, all the issues which are created because of stress, things like uh, cardiac issues, the health, you know, the, the heart issues, the uh, diabetes, which, which is also a, a result of stress, uh, things like, uh, you know, stomach issues, uh, you know, irritable bowel syndromes, uh, fatigue, uh, you know, behavioral problems, behavioral issues, all these things, which basically the root is uh, the stress. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are actually attacking the root of that. And that's right. how we, you know, do away with all these uh, physical issues. I see, I see. Uh, recently, I heard one interview. Uh, I think this person's name is called uh, Mr. Greg Braden. Uh, he talked about right. how, yeah, how the mind right that the thoughts are the language for the mind whereas the emotion is a language for the heart and, and mr joshi you also mentioned about emotions uh so i wonder is it about you know connecting the mind with the heart something like Correct. This? it's all about your it's all about our belief uh, mm -hmm. greg braden as you rightly said he has written a beautiful book called spontaneous healing of belief 
Uh, and uh, I also believe uh, in the same thing that whatever you believe, you manifest in your life. I so, see. Uh, and, and uh, beliefs are created because of various reasons, because of the conditioning you have gone through, because of the upbringing, because of the societal patterns, because of what you experience in your life. And uh, how you perceive those things will ultimately create a belief. And mm. those beliefs will manifest. So if you are creating belief that my life is going to be full of problems, you are actually manifesting that. If you believe that I'm going to go through, uh, you know, physical issues, you're actually manifesting. So you're creating uh, issues, problems, uh, uh, you know, situations in your life because you're manifesting your belief. So it's all connected. You know, your, your mind, whatever you think, your perception, your beliefs are all connected to what you go through in your life. Right, right, right. So a lot of people uh, do not, cannot see that. Because they think that uh, this way of, you know, this way of living is like daydreaming or, you know, hoping for something. But I know it's not because end of the day, we still have to do something, but we have to have a positive belief so that we can focus on like what you say in your talk, focus on the now, you know, rather than worrying about future or regretting about the past, isn't it? Correct. And uh, uh, whatever, so, you know, as, as we see the negative effect of, uh, uh, of, of the beliefs, we also have the positive effect of belief in yes. the sense that uh, uh, if, we, if we believe uh, in the positive aspect, uh, that's what the affirmations do. You know, when we affirm uh, something that I am happy, uh, what it does is that when you say I am happy, it makes some chemical changes with inside your brain. And uh, that actually creates that whole feeling of happiness within you. So it's not, it's not only the words, but how you, you know, if you believe in that, you are actually creating a positive impact in your body. So affirmations uh, create belief systems and belief systems manifest. I see, I see. Yeah, uh, it's really, really powerful. And, and the good thing is recent, you know, recently more and more evidence, like scientific evidence experiment is, is proving that, you know, this thing, I mean, do exist, and I mean, the, the whole field of epigenetic is all about positive belief, so it's really wonderful. Um, the next thing I'd like to uh, ask you is about this past life regression therapy. Like, um, how can we find out our, about our past life? All right, so uh, I'll, I'll just give you a brief, uh, uh, you know, discussion about what, we, what the process is all about. Uh, suppose uh, there's a CCTV camera attached to your head. Mm -hmm. And this CCTV camera is uh, recording each and every event you are going through uh, in your life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All this recording is going in your subconscious mind as a memory. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, memories are neutral. Memories do not have any positive or negative uh, impact. Yeah. But along with the memories, whatever we are going through in our life, whatever we experience in our life, we are also going through emotions. So, for example, I am in my office uh, and my boss fires me. What will happen is that that's an event which will go down as a memory. But along with that event, uh, suppose I get angry on my boss or I get uh, the, the feeling of frustration. That emotion is also getting attached to the memory and going down in our subconscious mind as a suppressed emotion. Now, this process has been happening not only since the time we came in our mother's womb as a fetus, but since many, many lifetimes we have lived. And all this, these suppressed emotions, the, all these emotions which are stored in our subconscious, they become the root of whatever we are today. Our personality traits, our behavioral patterns. Uh, whatever we attract in our life, our reactions, our situations, everything. So whatever we are is the result of our past. Now, uh, Eastern philosophies uh, believe uh, in re soul reincarnation. Western philosophies don't believe uh, in the soul reincarnation so much. But I'm sure uh, now uh, lot and lot, lots and lots of studies are being done uh, in the West as well. But uh, predominantly Eastern philosophies believe in uh, soul reincarnation. So the system is like this, that our soul has two parts. Soul, uh, the outer covering, and there's an inner core. 
the outer covering which is called as jiva that contains all the things which which we store in our subconscious mind all our experiences all our uh, emotions our ideas our uh, all our wisdom we have uh, gained all our memories and our karmas the central the core portion of our soul is the divine uh, light which is basically coming from that source which which is a greater energy or greater source or whatever uh, name you call it by now this uh, this uh, together soul is jiva and atma it is together called as jivatma now this uh, jivatma will travel lifetime after lifetime after lifetime uh, together so hmm. once we uh, reincarnate in a particular body in particular lifetime this jiva portion becomes our subconscious mind and that is where we are getting we are storing each and every memory emotion uh, experiences we go through uh, in that that sub subconscious which becomes jiva and then taken to the uh, next lifetime so past life regression is a process by which we go deeper in our subconscious mind we go to that state of mind where all these memories can be accessed so our uh, mind uh, has various states of activities for example the level which we are talking now is called as beta state of mind it is the most active alert uh, state of mind we go a little deeper you know light light meditation light sleep we go to the alpha state of mind the alpha state is where most of the healing therapies are based on so reiki pranic healing all other healing therapies are based on alpha state of mind which is a light sleep light meditation state then there is a deeper state which is called as theta state of mind the theta state is where you know our dreams come out from so this is the deeper state of mind deeper subconscious level and then the fourth level is the delta state which is the total uh, no activity state where we actually you know when we go to deep sleep we go into the delta state of mind we have to go to the theta state to access all our memories now past life regression basically takes us deeper uh, as a process it takes us to the theta state of mind once we are in that state we can experience our memories so what happens is when we experience our memories we are reliving our memories so when we go there we relive a memory of a particular lifetime and when we relive a particular memory it comes up to our conscious awareness and when when it comes to the conscious awareness we can actually feel all those emotions right when we relive the memory we, we can feel the emotions when we feel the emotions they are coming deep from the deep subconscious level to the conscious awareness to the surface and then releasing from there now analogy could be something like this that if we take a can of air under the surface of water and we open the can what will happen is the bubble of air would travel to the surface yes and then it would release itself yes the same way these emotions when they come to the come to the surface uh, you know conscious awareness they release themselves by releasing emotions of our previous lifetimes of our of our previous memories what we are doing is that we are uh, relieving ourselves from the situations or issues or traumas we are ex experiencing in the present life the because of these memories so we are basically clearing the root cause of whatever we are experiencing now in the present moment mm. so by this therapy we release the root cause now uh, this is one thing this is a therapeutic use or a therapeutic way of explaining this uh, process so we are you know uh, what we are doing is we are clearing our baggage by which we are uh, making things better in the present life but that's not all by with the help of this process we also go to a state which is called as lbl state life between life state in that state uh, you know life between life means between two lifetimes right yes. so as per the theory of reincarnation uh, we plan our future life before we are born so you know before we are born we are planning the purpose of that particular lifetime we are planning things uh, you know situations challenges uh, who are going to be associated with us before we uh, take birth so we can go to that state lbl state and actually know why we are here what is the purpose of this life in this lifetime and that gives us a sense of direction in this life because what happens is that most often at the age of 2 or 3 or 4 we tend to forget our purpose of life 
and then we live most often life uh, you know unconsciously uh, without having any kind of sense of direction or purpose but we all at some point uh, would want to know our purpose of life and once we know that through this process uh, you know our life can be a completely different uh, journey altogether right can you give me some example of the purposes of life that you know in the therapy that we can find i mean yeah the you know, purpose of life like right? some examples you know so i found my own purpose uh, uh, you know when when i went to the pur- uh, to the lbs state uh, it was a metaphysical experience for me and my guru came and hugged me and i asked him what is the purpose of my life so uh, i came to know that my purpose is to to heal the world but there are many many people i there was one one lady who was uh, working in a uh, in a multinational company uh, uh, you know at a very high post and uh, she was uh, she uh, attended one of my past life regression workshops so during that time she came to know that she saw herself teaching destitute children and she saw that her purpose in this life is to teach and uh, basically teach destitute children so after this workshop uh, she started thinking she said that you know her passion was also to teach so uh, she left her job and she joined uh, uh, you know th- there's a uh, an ngo which teaches you how to teach the children it's called as, uh, as teach india so she, she joined this ngo she learned how to teach children and now she's uh, she's you know a, 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 on a day to day basis she is teaching uh, slum children destitute children she go to uh, you know schools in slums and teaches those children and uh, today uh, you know when i talk to her she says and i am extremely happy i am feeling so satisfied in my life uh, that i am doing something which is basically uh, aligning with with my purpose of life wonderful wonderful it's beautiful i think uh, you know as you were talking i was just you know coming out to this insight that you know it's because of the so called modern world where you know under this current monetary system people were being conditioned to uh, you know always always gather more uh, material wealth and it is this process that actually got us lost in our true purpose because uh, we just got stuck at the money level and we never look past that what what are the money for what what would the money you know be used in you know so correct because we think always think from our conscious perspective our perception in our life is created by our conscious mind which is only 4% of our mind i see 96% of our mind is our subconscious mind oh. now our perceptions our logic that that is the surface which is created by this uh, you know logical mind or the conscious mind so most often we are thinking or taking decisions uh, making our choices from this 4% of our mind now if we go deeper and find out who we truly are we will find ourselves to be a completely different person altogether and when we start taking decisions from the insights or wisdom we are getting from our subconscious mind i think uh, all of our lives will change completely right right thank you so much thanks for enlightening me on this uh i like to also ask because just now you were mentioned that 95% is subconscious right is that right yeah okay so 5% what what do you call that Uh, the conscious level conscious mind conscious okay, mind conscious, or logical mind. mind right correct um uh, i listen to satguru uh uh if from isha foundation uh, some, some of his clips he also he he mentioned something about um you know meditation and when we do all this meditation and looking inward we are achieving uh you know we we are becoming more and more aware right uh and and all this thing so i'm i'm just checking my understanding does it mean that uh people who are enlightened they are they can access deeper into their subconscious and therefore have a higher level of awareness about what they want in life about right uh, is that right so i i'll give you a, a, a little exa- you know uh, explanation of this concept uh, okay. there are various types of you know when we say consciousness uh what we are is our human consciousness right and there is something called as universal consciousness so universal consciousness is what we see all around us you know manifesting in in different ways uh around us so that is universal consciousness 
universal consciousness is like an uh, internet like the web and it has uh, all the wisdom all the uh, information uh, everything all the knowledge which which is there like a web uh, in there mm. now when we uh, meditate what we do is we connect to our subconscious mind you know uh, we go deeper and this subconscious mind is directly connected to our to the universal consciousness So, so when we when we connect our senses to the subconscious, we are connected to the web, mm. and that's where we have access to all the wisdom, all the information, all the creativity, uh, whatever we need, and that's where we have a deeper understanding about life. That's where we, when we connect uh, to the subconscious, we know that life is not what we see it as, but uh, you know, it's there's a deeper process or the or a larger plan uh, in action in all. In in the life of all of us, right? Does it mean like what Sadhguru has said? He said, "If I understand this piece of life myself, then I'll be able to understand other people's, uh, or I will understand the life, right? In general, correct? Because we once once we once we are connected to the universal consciousness, we are connected to all all the people around. Yes, yes. Because Not each one of us is a part of that universal consciousness. So once I am connected to that, then I am connected to everyone. Wonderful. and then we when then we become a part of this you know uh, this whole plan then we uh, we are able to understand we are able to be aware of uh, of of this you know what's happening around us right 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 uh can i also can i also say that that is the reason why uh migratory birds who flew from the north to the south you know in uh, cold weather and then The children were born, you know, hatch the eggs. They will fly back to the north without the GPS, without their mother telling them how to fly back. They're able to do that. Is that the wisdom from the universal consciousness? Yeah. So uh, you know, when you know, we as per uh, the theory of evolution, when we evolve, uh, we evolve at various levels. So uh, you know, we evolve from rocks, minerals, and crystals to plants and trees, then to animals, and then to human beings. now uh, till the plants and trees and animals state we are all working out of instinct and this instinct is guided by the universal consciousness so plants oh. and trees and animals are directly connected to the universal consciousness but as soon as we become humans we get this ex- extra you know additional faculty which we call as intellect oh. and we take our decisions through intellect this which is basically our you know 4% conscious mind now uh, animals don't have that animals are directly connected all the time uh, to this universal consciousness we need to go deeper to get connected that is why animals don't have to meditate they can't meditate but they don't have to meditate in fact they are always meditating because they are always meditating right 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 right, right. thank you so much for explaining this now now i can put the pieces together because uh, yeah so it's fantastic fantastic right So that's why we need to meditate and uh, right, <laughs> what wonderful, wonderful. Can I also while while we are still talking about this subject, um, can I ask you about uh, Wim Hof, the Dutch man who used a lot of breathing techniques to overcome a lot of physical limitations, and even use his mind power to resist the. Uh, Um, you know the poison or the toxics in, uh, injected into his body. Right. So, see, the breath uh, is a very, very powerful uh, tool which has been given to us. We take breath for granted, and uh, we, you know, think that uh, breath comes and goes on its own, so we don't have anything, you know, nothing to do with it. Uh, but once we understand this beautiful concept, uh, uh, you know, once we experience it. uh you don't have to do uh, much you just observe your breath when it goes in and out and when you observe it uh, that process itself takes you deeper into your subconscious so breath is a very very powerful tool uh, given to all of us and it can create wonders so once you you know attune yourself to your own breath that actually helps you to heal at the physical level uh to take take away all your toxins from your uh, body but not only that at the emotional and mental level as well so more and more awareness you can bring in because you are taking away 
uh, by all the layers of conditioning uh, and beliefs we have uh, created for ourselves. So breath actually helps us to, you know, uh, heal uh, at all the levels. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, uh, Mr. Joshi, can I have like two minutes break? I, I need to go to the toilet very quickly and then I'll come yes, back. Yes, sure. Yes, thank sure. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, sorry, I, I just put uh, a, you know, a power cord to, to my mobile, the power is going off. Oh, no worries, no worries. Thank you, thank you. Uh, can I just quickly visit back to the, uh, because I noticed that you also mentioned about relieving is relieving, right? So relieving the past experience is relieving because uh, it eases, it, 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 it takes us away from the burden, right? It, yeah. So uh, is there, because when we relieve the past, sometimes we feel like anxious again, you know, again and again and again. So uh, when you, when you mention relieving is relieving, does that mean that we should interpret the past in a certain way so that we can, we can, we can feel more relief? Uh, when we say reliving is relieving, it basically means that uh, in, in, in the process of uh, past life regression, we go to that state of mind, relive a particular memory as if it is happening now. It could be a memory of our past life or it could be a memory of our present life. We relive the memory as if it is happening now. So when, when we relive a memory, we are bringing back those memories and emotions to the conscious awareness, from the subconscious mind to the conscious awareness. And when we bring it to the conscious awareness, that releases itself. Mm, right. So that's right. why when we relive a memory, we are relieving ourselves from the traumas associated with that memory. Will, will, will it happen in such a way that it becomes in, like a habit? Like, you know, we, we keep thinking about the past and then it hurt us again and again and again. Will, will that happen? Like an attachment no, once, kind of thing. Once we have once we have relived a memory, and once we have you know released the emotions associated with that memory, then we will uh, you know those memories. We will not forget the memory. The memory will be there, mm. but we will not be getting affected by those memories. Ah, right, right, right. And also, you mentioned something about forgiveness, uh, on forgive others as well as forgive ourselves. Correct. Because forgiveness acts as a very, very powerful tool to cut our baggage. 
right? So when we go to a past memory and we forgive that person, what we are doing is there is a invisible cord attached between that person and our, ourselves. You know, through that whatever instance has happened. So by forgiving, we are cutting that cord and letting right. it free. Right, right, right. Understand. Understand. Otherwise, it will, it will affect our our life, affect so how that, we interact with people. Otherwise, it is pulling you back. Mm. Right, right. Thank you, thank you, sir. All right. So, uh, yeah, uh, that part I need to revisit. Uh, thank you for clearing it up. Uh, now, another thing uh, to continue where we left off just now, talking about the breathing. You know, uh, you you mentioned a term called like attune to our own breathing. So, how how can we attune to our own breathing? The easiest way is to observe your breathing. When we breathe in and breathe out, we can feel that breath touching at various points in our inside our nose, in our windpipe and our lungs. Right? We can feel that. Just observe that feeling as it goes in and then comes out. Mm. Right? Every time you do that, uh, automatically you'll find that you are actually clearing yourself from the conscious binding and going deeper into subconscious. All right. I see. I see. That's why they say we have to be present, have to be present. Correct. Observe your breath means being in the present. Mm, right. Right. Without thinking a lot, without thinking like, what will this do to me? Now I'm present. Now what? Just being present. Just right. be present because life happen, happens in the present moment. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, coming back to Wim Hof, uh, can, can you share with us some of your thoughts on, on Wim Hof's techniques or Wim Hof's, you know, his, what, what, what he can do, things like that? I, I, my yeah, my own that... take, my, sorry, yeah, my own take is that. Uh, Wim Hof is a guy who make this known to more people in the Western world. But I believe there have been other people be able to do things like that as well. Is that right? Uh, yeah. I'd like yeah. to hear from you. Yeah. J so, just a moment. I, I'll just, I'm just uh, uh, checking whether the power is coming or not. Just mo one moment. No worries. Thank you. Yeah. Now it's charging because I thought it was not charging. Sorry. Oh, no, no worries. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. So, see, there are various... Uh, uh, breathing is something which we all know is something uh, which, uh, we know, which is very, very powerful. Now, uh, there have been people uh, in the East and people in the West who have experimented with their breaths and uh, who have been, you know, uh, t teaching various people about the importance of the breath. Eastern philosophies has, have been there since a long, long time, since thousands of years in Eastern part of the world, uh, especially in Indian subcontinent, uh, in the, in the uh, you know, as we go Eastern side in China, uh, breath has been a very, very important and uh, it has been recognized as an important tool to take us deeper. Uh, in the West, yes, uh, things have uh, now, uh, you know, people have start, now started understanding and uh, they are, uh, you know, actually learning from the Eastern philosophies what, what is the importance of the breath. So, uh, breathing, see, their breathing techniques can be many. Yes. Uh, but uh, I think every person goes through a personal, personal experience. And uh, that's how mm. we know that, you know, uh, what we are experiencing. So, what I am telling you, what I am, uh, you know, coming from is through my own experience. Right? So uh, when, we, when we talk about experiences, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, whenever you understand, you uh, listen or, you know, you read about somebody, uh, it is a secondhand experience because we are reading their experiences. You're right, you're right. Unless you do it yourself. Yes, yes. When you do it yourself, it becomes a first-hand experience. Now, first-hand experience is the most important because once you have the first-hand experience, then you don't need books because you become a book for others. That's right. Yeah. 
on here. Don't know why. Yeah. Can you hear uh, me? Uh, I, I think I missed out a good uh, 10 seconds of it because I think maybe the, the Wi-Fi wasn't like very high just now, very powerful. Okay, so I'll repeat that. Yes. So uh, many, many people have their own techniques, devise their own methods uh, in breathing. Uh, every person uh, will devise from his or her own experience, right? So in the West, uh, as you said, there are people in the East, they have been there, these techniques have been there. Uh, the most important thing is to experience yourself. You're right, right. Yes. Right, and once you experience yourself, it becomes your own first-hand experience. And then you don't need a book. You don't need to be to learn from anywhere else because you are your own teacher. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right. So, what you are doing right now, right, uh, for your clients, uh, I think is very, very. Uh, unique at the moment because a lot of people are just attacking the surface level of the problems like maybe they're not happy uh, so they just tackle the level that is very superficial but uh, for the first time actually uh, I'm listening to this you know I'm exposed to past life regression and also the breathing technique and also the meditation how you combine it and, and the way you explain it is you know, make people like myself who are, you know, uh, who has no knowledge in this area understand, you know, beginning to see something in it. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and I suppose you're also bringing back this tradition to, to a country that is so rich in this ancient wisdom, uh, just that sometimes, you know, the modernization is taking us further away from it. Correct. Modernization is good. I mean, uh, we all need to, you know, live a, a comfortable life. We all need to have good facilities around us. Science and technology has done for us. Uh, so it's, it's a good thing because we are all uh, moving forward, moving yeah. ahead. But yeah. we must also uh, understand uh, the basic principles of life, which we, uh, you know, inherit from our past. Uh, things like we should be, we should be, you know, thankful for things we already have in our life, instead of complaining for things which we don't have. That's the wisdom comes from our past. Uh, things like we should always have faith, unconditional faith on the universe and yourself, uh, because absence of faith creates fear. Mm. Uh, so things like these, you know, because uh, we, we, you know, modern, of course, we must become modern. We, we have new technologies to help us, uh, new development, which helps us in our day to day lives. Uh, but our life uh, will become much more fulfilling if, if we understand these basic principles of how we deal with our past, uh, deal with our present and our future. So, you know, regrets, angers, uh, guilts about our past where we need to forgive and let go. Uh, be in the present moment, give your best in the present moment. Uh, you know, take your chances because this is the only life you have. Uh, you know, a moment where you are living your life. So be in the present moment and plan for our future because future, uh, you know, instead of having fears and insecurities about your future, uh, uh, you know, but if we, if we have faith and uh, plan for, for your future, what you're going to do and how you're going to achieve your life goals, uh, the life itself becomes much more fulfilling and successful uh, because the biggest regrets uh, a person, the biggest regret a person has on his or her deathbed is that uh, he or she could not utilize uh, their full potential. So yes. we, we have to understand that because uh, oh, making money or creating wealth or creating material things is not the only thing that makes life successful. We need to have uh, an inner adventure, a sense of inner fulfillment as well. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh... I also ask, like to ask, like if people like us want to know more about your 12 minute technique and past life regression, or maybe some people out there, our listeners, they're also interested in becoming, uh, doing what you're doing, you know, becoming a certified uh, past life regression therapist. Uh, what, what are some of the steps that we can take? So these are typically, uh, you know, there's a workshop. So the basic workshop uh, for past life regression, there's a two day workshop where you experience your own past lives. 
uh, following that is uh, a training uh, workshop so there is a, uh, a five five day workshop which trains you in the techniques of past life regression but this is this five day thing is a one year program so in five days you learn the techniques and then you practice uh, for one whole year with your own people and then after one year there is a there is a test so there is a written test and uh, a panel interview uh, only after which you are certified as a past life regression therapist so it's like mm. a program one year program right. so uh, if anyone wants to uh, you know uh, attend so you have uh, of course in india uh, people know and they can attend my workshops here yeah. but uh, if if people are out from outside uh, you know from from australia or from uh, you said you are from malaysia or any other places yes, yes. yes. Uh, of course you know there can be opportunities where we can you know uh, arrange workshops there i can i'm always uh, you know uh, happy to come over and teach that these techniques uh, in your country and right. uh, if you arrange a workshop of course we can we can do that and you can be a certified past life regression therapist there uh, for sky technique as well uh, so there are there's a first technique which is level 1 technique which is a combination of seven breathing techniques uh, which with the breathing patterns then there is a level 2 which is another technique which is a, a shorter technique and which cleanses you from within uh, through your breath so uh, uh, and then you become a you know certified uh, uh, sky teacher so again same thing you know if you are in india you can attend my workshops here but if you want to you know arrange these workshops in your country uh, most welcome uh, my my information is available on my website uh, www.santoshjoshi.com and uh, you can contact us and uh, we can we'll be happy to arrange workshops in your country as well right thank you so much thank you so much it's been really uh, educational very insightful um also because i'm a teacher at a college so uh, i just like to uh, request that you share something with the young people like if before before we end this session is there anything you want to share uh okay by by the way also i like to ask like uh what is your parenting style like what do you uh you know think about you know young people uh, or your expectations on your children yes right so uh, i believe parenting is an art uh in the sense that uh, uh, when we are bringing a soul uh, you know to this life mm. uh we have to you know we have to make sure that we are not putting our aspirations our ambitions on that soul the every soul comes with its own purpose with its own uh, you know uh, kind of way of life and uh, what we do as a parent is uh, as soon as you know the child starts growing up uh, we we put our ambitions uh, you know you should become an engineer or a doctor or a pilot or something you know you start telling the child uh, so what you are doing is you are putting your aspirations on the child you are yes. putting your ambitions on the child and most often what we do is that we force uh, the child to to go through a fixed patterns of life or societal patterns you know you have to do this 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 you know get uh, get educated then get a job and then get married and then have kids and so on and so forth uh, as a parent uh, we should always be like something which you know uh, gives protection to the child supports the child in its growth and that's it and let yes. the child grow on its own uh, like what uh what the soil does to a seed when you uh -huh. sow a seed yeah. uh the the soil doesn't tell a seed what to become if you are sowing a seed of a uh, of a mango uh, the child doesn't say no you should become a uh, you know a banana tree you know the soil what it will do is just protect and give it right atmosphere right environment for that seed to become a plant or a tree right so that's what parenting should be give uh, children right opportunity right atmosphere right environment for them to grow their own abilities to grow their own self into a better person they know what they want to do they want they know exactly what they want to achieve in life just give them that right atmosphere and support so that they can be what they are can you give me some examples of 
like your child growing up, you know, how, how you interact with them. I mean, just briefly, you know, my son is seven years old, so I'm listening for my own benefit, you know. <laughs> right. I, I, I don't have a child uh, myself, but uh, I believe that children are, you know, when they come, they are filled with love. You know, that's the most lovely thing you can ever have. Yes. Okay. Uh, children around you, they are, they are like pure uh, love incarnate. Mm. Now, uh, uh, we have to, you know, as a parent, our responsibility is to create that positive atmosphere around them instead of telling them, study, 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 or do this, do this, or don't do this, you should or should not. This kind of parenting is stopping a child from blossoming on its own, uh, whatever they want to become. So uh, ask them, what, what do you want to do in life? Maybe they come up with some fancy ideas. That's yes. fine. Yes. But then, you know, uh, th there might be some way of their, you know, uh, they achieving that kind of things. In today's world, there is no dearth of opportunities in any field. Suppose yes. a child says that I want to become a fashion designer. Yes, of course. Why not? A child says I want to become a painter or I want to sing or I want to, you know, uh, so studies. What we see today uh, is, is uh, I feel, insufficient because what we study in schools and colleges today is mostly, uh, you know, uh, 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 training you to, to do a job or to, you know, work in a particular field. But uh, the more open uh, the child is in what it wants to do and more supportive the parent is, the child can blossom into something much, much more wonderful that uh, even, you know, no one can even imagine. Yes, exactly. Beautifully said. Uh, I think I have one more last question. Uh, it's about how do you balance between business and, you know, what you are doing? Because, uh, it's, you know, you are also an entrepreneur, right? Although you, you know, lead people to the spiritual path, uh, you, of course, need to make yourself sustainable so that financially is viable as well. So can, do you have some uh, advice for uh, budding entrepreneurs? young entrepreneurs so i believe that uh, whatever you do first most important thing is that you have you, you should uh, have self belief faith in whatever you know you are doing uh, faith in the universe and faith in your own self your own abilities and do justice to whatever you are do be genuine in the sense that you know many times we feel that oh you know i should do only this much and not you know i'm i'm being paid for only this much and i should not do you know extra mm -hmm. thing or whatever it is you have to be true to yourself when you are mm -hmm. you know when suppose you are in a business like what i am true to if if you feel satisfied with whatever you want to give doesn't matter if you have to give more time or more energy to do that or to to give that but you must feel satisfied with whatever you are doing so be genuine with your own self in whatever you do, first thing. And secondly, yes. uh, you know, there's a law of providence, which always, which is, you know, an infallible law, which always uh, is there in, uh, in the universe. Law of providence says that we are all here to live our best life and the universe provides us with whatever, whatever we need in our life. So we are always being provided with whatever we need. And I have found this beautifully in my life uh, the, since the time I left my job, I thought that, you know, I will be uh, financially in a very bad state and stuff like that. Yeah. It happened the other way around because I believed that there is always an energy, a force which is always helping me, protecting me, guiding me. So uh, I have never found that, uh, that I had to financially struggle because it was so beautifully taken care by the universe. This uh, something, some invisible force which is always there to guide you and protect you. So I believe that have faith in that uh, universal uh, you know, law of providence, have faith in your own abilities and be genuine with whatever you do. And these three things will take you a long, long way in whatever you do. And whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a teacher, whether you are in whatever field of life you are in, it will help yeah. you in, in that. Field. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, um, I can't thank you enough, Mr. Joshi. So uh, I'll keep in touch. And um, once this uh, video is ready, I'll share it with you. Yes, thank you very much. It was very one, nice to speak to you and uh, hope we speak again. And I, I'm sure we are going to share more and more things. Yes, thank you so much. All right, bye for now.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.